All right, so I've explained uh, or introduced Thevenin's analysis in a previous video. Um, this time I'm going to use Thevenin's analysis to solve uh, or Thevenin's analysis to solve a bridge circuit um, that would be difficult to solve using just Ohm's law and Kirchhoff methods. Now there's lots of tricks out there to find uh, the values of a bridge circuit. Um, uh, you know, so go find those and and use them if you if you uh, feel you need to. The bridge circuit offers you know a unique challenge, so it's a good tool to practice some of your um, your theorems and and processes. But uh, so today we're gonna we're gonna do Thevenin's analysis, and um, I'm expecting that you've at least looked up and kind of have some idea that, that Thevenin's analysis even exists. So I'm, I'm not going to be as detailed on my explanations, but I am going to use them and walk through that process. So here's our given circuit. So we have a bridge circuit and the values are shown 50 volts applied, 2.2 K ohms for R1, so on and so forth. Um, so I am going to jump right in. I'm going to find, let's see what color my pen is. It's red. The pen is red. Okay, so I'm going to find my um, find, well, let's see, find all voltages, currents, whatever, in the end, but basically I'm going to find R Thevenin, I'm going to find V Thevenin, and, you know, do my re, uh, Thevenin redraw. Okay, my Thevenin equivalent circuit. All right, <clears throat> and so my target resistor, it doesn't really matter which one, but I think that that uh, these corner resistors offer the most challenging redraws. If you can redraw the R Thevenin for um, R1, for example, uh, you're in pretty good shape for doing redraws um, because there's kind of a difficult challenge um, uh, with that redraw that I'll, I may mention as I'm, as I'm doing it. So anyway, I'm going to solve this entire circuit using Thevenin and then probably some Kirchhoff. So, you know, Thevenin is a theorem. Thevenin offers some cool tricks. Um, you know, so Thevenin's your friend, you know, he comes to the party. He had, he's got some pretty good party tricks and he does some cool things. Um, but he's not your best friend. He does not stay around, um, to, to clean up after the party so there's so it's a very algorithmic process there's not a lot of double checking um, until you until you find some values um, and compare that with your operation of your original circuit so Kirchhoff truly is your best friend so Kirchhoff's gonna stay around and help you clean up basically at the end of this we're gonna do some Kirchhoff analysis and prove that the circuit is functioning and the values that we found with Thevenin are correct so let's get started. So I'm going to start with my V Thevenin or my R Thevenin analysis. Let's jump over here. I think I have a page for that. So I just I suggest, and I know it, I know it takes lots of paper, but I suggest doing your um, R Thevenin analysis, your V Thevenin analysis, your Thevenin equivalent circuit, um, all on separate clean pieces of paper dedicated just to that one process because um, it, it's very easy to grab a wrong number or to start trying to think of one circuit while you're analyzing the other um, just help your own help out your, own, your the old brain um, declutter put only what's only what's needed to solve that step in front of you and everything else just don't even look at it okay and the reason I say that is you know when I observe my students and the new the new um, technicians um, they tend to, you know, for some reason we want to save paper, you know, probably environmental reasons or cost money or whatever. But uh, they try to cram everything on one piece of paper. One, it's very crowded and it's hard to um, really focus on what you need. Um, you know, the other thing is your pattern recognition in your brain. Um, you have to ignore things, and so that uses up brain power. Um, 
and then it makes it a little bit harder for those 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 relationships to pop out at you so anyway I'm gonna get off my high horse and just actually get started here so let, let's get started all right so I'm gonna do my R Thevenin redraw for this crazy bridge circuit and remember I'm doing I'm doing Thevenin analysis for R1 so I'm going to remove R1 and short that load okay so now my circuit's already more cluttered than I like it to be when I'm analyzing a circuit that's that's complex so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw the original circuit without changing anything other than I'm just drawing I'm just drawing the circuit again but with the steps of what I'm doing applied in the, in this case I'm doing R Thevenin okay so now I'm gonna whoops let's get rid of that line I'm just redrawing the circuit with my R Thevenin steps applied so here's my B right there okay so I've got R2 R3 whoa R3 R4 and R Five. So R1 is gone. I'm not going to think about R1 until the end of this process. So basically, the f first step, I redraw the circuit to declutter and clarify. So you can see I basically I've shorted out my supply and I've removed R1. Okay, and then I just copied the circuit directly. I didn't move anything, didn't change anything, just applied my R seven and steps. Okay. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna redraw it again, okay? And I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of get a little overly dramatic and do a series of redraws just to show um, those steps. And this is why um, this redraw doing the paths from A to B can be difficult. And there's a reason for that. And for some reason, our brains, when we start off a redraw um, with multiple paths, uh, more than two. Um, it, it messes with our brain and it, it makes it difficult. So let me just show you what I do. So the first thing I do is I look at it and I'm like, all right, well, I got this crazy long wire kind of going around that side. I'm going to have a path here to be, a path here to be, and then, oh boy, this one goes all the way over. Okay, it's all, you know, already I'm kind of lost. So I take my, I try to identify that this is all one common path that's A right here there's nothing but a wire between it that's A you know that's A it's all A there's A look at that A right so here's A touching the R4 R5 here's A touching R2 okay so now I'm I may suggest this next step where you just here's A right I'm still not moving anything I'm just another declutter process which is the whole point of redraws really is just draw it in a way that makes it pop out as to what you need to do with this circuit. Okay, so look, R4 to A, R3 to B, right, there's B. Okay, I'm just copying it down. I, I'm not moving anything. I'm just taking out the clutter, taking out the trash. All right, there's R5, and that touches A. So now I basically, you know, this is still not clear as to what's in parallel with what yet, so I'm going to do another redraw. Okay, A. Okay, so now I can see one, two, three. Three things touching A, right? And what are those two things? Well, I've got I've got R2. I've got R4. And I've got all the way over there R5. Okay, now what touches B? Well, R5 touches B, but R2 and R4 don't. What do they touch? Well, they touch, they both come together at a common point right here. And then we've got that R3 in there. Okay, and then sure enough, R3 and R5 come together, and there's our B. Okay, so this may or may not pop out yet. One more clarification and then I'll actually do the, the calculation. So 
just to really really clean this up I like to make I like to make it really nice and clean so you can see what is related to what okay nice and clean as I freehand everything R4 okay those come together go through R3 not B3 R3 R3 R5 All right, now I can see that I've got a series parallel network where R5 is in parallel. I got two branches essentially. I've got a branch one and a branch two just to just to identify them to talk about. So in branch one, I've got R2 in parallel with R4 in series. So this equivalent is in series with R3. So that branch resistance, this equivalent plus R3, is in parallel with R5. Okay, so now I can actually see something that I can use to make a, a you know, a formula or a math equation with. So I'm going to scroll here. So avert your eyes. All right. So now I can actually do my calculations. Now, if you do this this process on a on a, you know, on your paper, it's it it does look a little cluttered. So I suggest maybe roughing this out on a on a piece of paper and then just take your equivalent network that you like and then put that on a clean piece of paper all right all by itself okay so just just let's we're just going to look at this this circuit right and then we're going to solve that so branch one resistance okay let me actually do kind of what I just said I was going to do. All right, so now I, I just went and grabbed my values and I've I've moved off so that my all I'm looking at is my simplified redraw for R thevenin. So now I can actually see I've got an equivalent circuit or a parallel network in series with R3 which all which that branch is now in parallel with R5. So let's start let's start looking at some numbers. So first I'm going to solve the REQ. Okay, and that's just going to be uh, 1 over R2 plus 1 over R4. Okay, uh, REQ again, uh, R2 is 1.8k plus, and R4 is 4.7k. So this should be. Um, less than I mean definitely less than 1.8 K it's gonna be probably not too far away from 1.8 K but but a little bit so somewhere around a thousand just a guess total guess so don't let's just see how good of a guesser I am okay so let's bring in the old calculator there it is so I'm going to do it the, the 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 visible way just like I've written it. So 1 divided by got to get a couple parentheses in there. 1 divided by 1.8k make sure my numbers are going in right. Plus parenthesis 1 divided by 4.7. Oh, see? Not going in right or I'm not hitting the right button. 4.7e to the third. Okay, now close those parentheses off. All right, so just make sure that it came in properly. So it's about, I was a little low on my estimate, my guess, but there it is. There's our number, K okay, ohms, or 1,302. So you could, you could round that off however much you want. I tend to tr not round too much um, if I can help it. All right, so now I need that branch one resistance, right? And I said branch one is going to be uh, REQ plus R3. Okay, so branch one is 1.302 one K plus what is R3? 1 K ohms. Okay, I made I made a mistake when I was doing one of these previously where. I wrote everything down properly, but then for some reason I just used my branch resistance and not my um, my R thevenin, or, or I used my equivalent and not my uh, 
branch resistance to find uh, the next step, which messed me up. So now to, to sum those, I'm just going to go 2302 ohms, or 2.302 2 K, which is actually less simple than just writing it out in this case. All right, so now I've got branch one all solved, and that's in parallel with R5. Okay, so let's draw that. And this is going to be the R Thevenin number. R Thevenin is going to be 1 over B1 plus 1 over uh, B2, which is just R5. I'm just going to write R5. Okay, so R Thevenin equals 1 over 1 over branch 1 was 2302 oh, ohms plus plus 1 over uh, let's see R5 is 3.3 okay ohms ohms all ohms so here it is R7 and see if I can get it into the calculator properly uh, here comes the calculator let's see all right so let's go ahead and um, I'm going to get that branch resistance total here. Okay, plus my um, less rounded number. Okay, so there's my branch one. Okay, so one divided by, get a couple of parentheses in here, one divided by my branch. Okay, so get that in there. Plus parentheses one divided by R5, which is just 3.3 e to the third. Okay, looks like I've got most of it in there properly. Let's just see how it comes out. So it looks like it worked. All right, and that, because of the unrounded number, it's kind of, yeah, now it looks good. It's all good. So there's my R Thevenin. One, one point, whoa, I don't know what's going on with that. Okay, so 1.356 ohms. Now assuming Assuming I did all that correct, um, there's my R Thevenin number. Okay, so I'm not going to stop and, and make sure or, or check it uh, too crazily. I'll just let it roll and we'll see how it goes. But that number right there is the one we're going to take with us to the to the end. Let's go ahead and let's go to let's go ahead to the Thevenin equivalent circuit and just punch that number in there. 1.356 ohms or k ohms. Oh, let's go in here. Um, this I can get rid of. Let's just get rid of that. Uh, cut. Get rid of that. Cut. All right. So I'm gonna use blue, and I'm gonna draw my Thevenin circuit. I know V Thevenin is going to come in here, R Thevenin is going to be here, and R1 is going to be there. Okay, that current is going to be IR1. Whoa, once we figure it out. And then I know my R Thevenin, let's plug that in 1, 3, 5, 6 ohms, 1,356 ohms. Um, rounded to four digits. All right. Okay. So I forgot what R1 is, but we'll we'll go get that real quick. So R1 is 2.2k. Let's go ahead and plug that in since we know it. 2.2k. All right. The only thing left to find is that V Thevenin, and we'll be able to solve this little circuit. Let's go do V Thevenin here.